Hey everyone, Daniel here and welcome back to another video. Here today, I want to sit down and talk to you guys about cryptocurrency staking versus cryptocurrency lending. Now I know the crypto industry as a whole does tend to get a little bit confusing sometimes. So my goal in this video is going to be to simplify these topics down as much as possible and give you guys an in depth look into cryptocurrency staking, cryptocurrency lending, the difference between the two, the pros and cons of both, and exactly my opinion on what you should be doing from an investment point of view, staking your coins, lending your coins, things along those lines. So if you enjoy these videos, feel free to leave a thumbs up and let's get into it. The first thing that we need to talk about to give a good foundation to the topic of both lending and staking is, you know, what backs essentially all transactions within the cryptocurrency system? The blockchain, right? The blockchain is essentially the backbone of the decentralized cryptocurrency system. And it's what allows you to send money without a central authority. So when we talk about a central authority, you can compare that to potentially like the US dollar, which is obviously a fiat currency, which is essentially controlled by the central bank. Oh, they have control over everything the US dollar does and all transactions done within that. But with the blockchain, there is no central power. It's all spread out within millions or you could arguably say billions of people, right? And when we talk about the blockchain, the thing that keeps it decentralized at this moment in time, or at least up until this moment in time, was Bitcoin or Ethereum or other cryptocurrency mining. Now, when we talk about what mining is, it's essentially a contest where essentially many different people around the world or many different computers are guessing or guessing mathematical equations to get to a certain number. Now, this involves a lot of powerful computers that participate in this and the winner in the essentially the computer that ends up guessing this random number is the winner and gets to update the next block slash page of transactions, right? So when we talk about this, the more powerful of a computer that you have, the more guesses you get per second, and thus the higher your chances are of winning. Now with this system, the chances of there being like a single monopoly or single person that controls the blockchain is highly, highly unlikely. And up until this moment in time, this is what's been keeping the decentralized system maintained. Now, when we talk about Bitcoin mining, this is known as a proof of work system, where essentially miners display the solution and prove that work was done to get that solution. And this was a consensus, uh, consensus mechanism uh, to essentially determine who gets to update the system next. Everyone agrees that this is how we're doing it. This system is obviously very reliable and secure and has been over the past a decade plus, but it is very resource in intensive, right? I want to talk about this. When we talk about Bitcoin mining, it involves a lot of energy to power all of these computers mining to get this one math or one math equation or one number. So when we talk about this, there's a lot of energy wasted throughout the process, which is why when you hear on the news, oh, Bitcoin actually is consuming just as much energy as Chile is on a yearly basis. So when we're talking or Chile, I, Chile, <laughs> but anyways, Bitcoin, Ethereum, cryptocurrencies are consuming a lot of power because of this mining process. So one of the best alternatives to Bitcoin mining is proof of stake. Now, this is very interesting. This is what we're here to talk about, guys. Proof of stake is an alternative to mining that gives the same end result, but changes the process. So instead of using electricity to win a contest, coins will be staked. So when we're talking about staking a coin, you essentially deposit funds onto a computer network. The funds in this case are called the stake and the computer is called a node. That's very important. So essentially we deposit a stake into a node. The stake is essentially the fund, the node is the computer. So once a stake is put in place, it takes part in a contest to forge a block. Now I remember how it's not exactly the same as we had earlier where you're trying to win a spot to essentially write the block. But in this case, you're just forging the block. So to determine a winner, the system is randomized through several factors, such as how much money is staked, how long it's been staked, and randomization to ensure an anti-monopoly environment and to ensure that essentially uh, no one individual is able to control the whole system. And through that randomization, a winner gets picked 
and a winner uh, essentially gets to forge one of the blocks or just like before gets to write one of the pages on the blockchain and that winner gets rewarded a network contribution so if this isn't clear i want to make this i want to make this very clear for you guys so you understand this we take a certain amount of ethereum let's say we put that ethereum into a node right this is like a computer that gets staked and it sits there up until a moment where eventually you get picked. So this is obviously a randomized process. And once that uh, you essentially get picked, your node gets picked. The same process that would happen earlier after all of the Bitcoin mining took place takes place in this situation. But you need to keep in mind that the energy intensive part of Bitcoin mining is actually solving that mathematical equation. And when we talk about it in this case, we're removing the whole part that involves solving that math mathematical equation, just filling that in with a randomized chance and giving essentially the right to write that next part of the blockchain to that person that gets picked randomly. I really hope that's clear, guys. We're gonna use an example here to really clarify this uh, right now with Ethereum. So when we talk about uh, you know this proof of stake system, many cryptocurrencies are using it, but one of the most evident ones is Ethereum, which just started using it and is expected to transition to it fully within the next few years. So they started as a proof of work system where you'd actually have to mine, uh, or not mine, but solve these mathematical equations to eventually solve it and and have the right to write your own block. When we talk about what's happening now, they are a trend or they're transitioning to a proof of stake system. So when we're talking about all of these like Ethereum 1.0s to Ethereum 2.0, Ethereum 1.0 is proof of work. So a computer was used to solve these mathematical equations to give you the right to essentially write this block and you can get a bit of a reward in for doing that. Now what we're talking about with Ethereum 2.0 is this proof of stake system where it's all randomized. So when we're talking about proof of stake now, this system is expected to transition fully to Ethereum 2.0 by 2022. Right now they're actually working together. So you can actually mine Ethereum and you can uh, you know, use proof of stake at the same time. So when we talk about this, uh, you know, essentially the amount you make as a percentage decreases the more people participate in staking. So as more validators are created, the percentage yield decreases. Picture it like a pie, right? The pie stays the same. Each person gets a slice of pie. As more slices are made, the size of each slice decreases. So, you know, uh, this will decrease with time. We're very early in this whole situation at this moment in time, but that is something to note. As the system gets more popularized and more people transition from mining into staking, more uh, the interest essentially, or the percentage, the yearly percentage made will decrease. So when we're talking about the limitations of this, uh, you know, there is a lot of technical knowledge needed to be known to actually do this staking, right? And uh, again, you need to have a dedicated computer to actually stake these coins. And on top of that, you need 32 Ethereum, a minimum of 32 Ethereum to actually start staking because it actually, uh, you need 32. That's like kind of like one, uh, you know, stake. That's what they call it. So even if, you manage to get all of that and you potentially mess something up a little bit and misconfigure it, you get a penalty. So obviously there's a lot of room for error for a lot of regular day folk when participating in staking. So, you know, how do you get involved? In my opinion, one of the best ways to get involved with Ethereum staking, cryptocurrency staking is by staking on an exchange that is solely meant to do this. This is the easiest solution and you can actually stake minimum amounts. Like, you know, with Ethereum, you need a minimum of 32, but if you bunch up a lot of people's Ethereum, uh, you don't actually need to deposit 32. You can deposit maybe half of one or one or three or things along those lines. Now, when we talk about crypto lending, this is obviously another aspect of, you know, potentially earning passive income within the cryptocurrency system. This is much more uh, simplified. The process is much more simplified rather. Uh, you obviously take crypto and you lend it out to other financial institutions or traders. Now these traders or you know, potentially financial institutions can do whatever they want with this cryptocurrency, right? They can potentially short it or uh, in, if they're in need of liquidity, they can uh, use it for that situation. But essentially you earn interest based off of what those traders and what those institutions are willing to pay. So obviously, the interest that you earn fluctuates with supply and demand. If there's a lot of liquidity and a lot of supply, 
the essentially the, the, the percentage or the, uh, the interest rate that you get will decrease substantially. And if the amount of demand decreases or the amount of demand increases, that will also have an impact on the percentage yield that you get. Now, currently, these yields are north of 5 to 10%, which is absolutely phenomenal for a lot of uh, cryptocurrency investors. But with time, just like staking, we expect these to decline to a more reasonable level comparable to potentially uh, interest rates closer to maybe 1, 2, 3%. Now, talking about the easiest way to get involved in cryptocurrency lending, in my opinion, the best way to do so is by downloading a crypto brokerage like BlockFi or Voyager Digital, which offer interest rates or, you know, which essentially take care of the whole process of lending out your cryptocurrency and give you back that interest on a monthly basis. That's the easiest way to get involved. Now, which one is better? Crypto lending or crypto staking? Well, from an interest standpoint, they're both actually pretty similar, giving similar interest rates across the board. Now, obviously, certain coins will give higher interest rates for staking and certain coins will give higher interest rates for lending. That's just how it's going to work. But overall, both give very similar interest rates. Now, when we look at it from a risk standpoint, however, staking actually has minimal risk while lending comes with risk due to the fact that you're lending it out to institutions that although uh, you know potentially have a slim chance of going bankrupt do have that chance of potentially defaulting and not being able to pay back that loan so when we talk about it from a risk standpoint staking has much less risk as the crypto is essentially just sitting on your hard drive not really doing much but from an interest standpoint, they're actually both pretty similar. Now, what would I do as a cryptocurrency investor? And I really wanna be transparent with you guys here today. Uh, obviously, I talk a lot about Voyager Digital on this platform. They're a cryptocurrency brokerage that offer interest on 20 plus tokens. They offer trading of over 50 tokens and they're a commission-free platform. Now, I am not incentivized to say this whatsoever. I live in Canada, so I can't even take advantage of the referral program, but you need to keep in mind that Voyager just announced the other day, I'm gonna uh, turn to the screen here. They just announced a partnership with Block Daemon. Now, what is Block Daemon? They are essentially a facilitator of cryptocurrency staking. And what they're gonna do is take care of the whole process of Voyager's crypto staking. This was just announced a couple days ago. And what's gonna happen is on top of Voyager's current lending program, where essentially they lend out cryptocurrencies to other financial institutions, they're gonna be able to offer crypto staking. So you're gonna get the best of both worlds here because with from the, the lending standpoint, obviously they're lending out to only a high quality institutions with high quality balance sheets with very minimal risk. And then you're also gonna get that aspect of crypto staking. So what's good about this is the fact that, you know, you have the best of both worlds. I mentioned previously that, you know, certain interest rates might be higher with staking, certain ones might be higher with lending with Voyager here, they're actually going to get the best of both because they're going to have the option if they see an interest rate higher on potentially Bitcoin using lending than they do see with staking, they might be able to just lend out those coins. But if staking has a higher interest rate with potentially Ethereum, they might just stake those coins. So with Voyager here, what's very interesting and the very interesting proposition that they present is the fact that you get, you know, pretty similar risk with that potential upside when it comes to that interest rate. And obviously they do all of this for you. You just buy the token opt-in and they take care of the whole interest uh, process and they pay you on a monthly basis. And again, I'm not incentivized to say this. I like Voyager as a platform, as a stock. I'm invested in their company. But then again, uh, you know, this partnership here with Block Damon, I, I think it's absolutely phenomenal. It's gonna open up another way for them uh, to really get into this interest space from not just lending, but also staking. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here today in this video. If you found any value whatsoever, feel free to hit that like button and also, uh, you know, maybe share with a fellow uh, cryptocurrency investor that isn't too familiar with the staking process. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day.